Antibiotics make you better until they don't. Infectious disease remains the second leading cause of death globally. An Australian already dies from bacterial infection every hour. This is more than brace and prostate cancer combined. However, the antibiotic discovery pipeline is broken. We haven't discovered a new class of antibiotics in over 30 years. The last one that got on the market is as old as I am. Most of us are also aware of the growing presence of superbugs, which are drug-resistant microbes. We don't have the drugs to kill them. And resistance has eventually been seen to nearly all antibiotics that, we have, that have been developed. So we'll always need new, to find new drugs to fight bacterial infections. This is a photo of my great uncle Robert. He caught tuberculosis in a prisoner camp during World War II in Europe. And this is a script he was given by his doctor when he returned. Um, it's in French, but it basically says, rest, eat well, and it prescribes drugs to treat the symptoms, but nothing to address the cause. Just like him, we are not dangerously close to a return to the pre-antibiotic era, when over half of all deaths were from bacterial infections. One in two Australians were prescribed an antibiotic in 2014. We use and overuse antibiotics, and the more we use them, the less effective they become. In a number of countries, antibiotics are even unregulated. They're available over the counter without a prescription. Antibiotics are also extensively used in agriculture for farm animals. We ingest some of them when we eat food, and some of them are swelled up in the environment. All these clearly drive the evolution of drug resistance. So to combat the resistant bacteria, we need new drugs. The problem is, pharmaceutical companies have left antibiotics development, and research funding in academia has also been scaled down. Antibiotic discovery is difficult. So during the, the golden age of antibiotics, um, between 1940 and, and 1960, um, scientists tested millions of molecules, like this, to find new types of antibiotics. And um, most of the drugs we have today are, are based on these discoveries. So antibiotics can be either very small molecules or very big, like this. This is vancomycin. So we have seen that antibiotics are not treated as an everyday commodity. Um, but there are some of the very few drugs actually able to cure a disease, often saving lives with a few weeks' treatments. Antibiotics are minor miracles. Despite this enormous social benefit, it can take billions of dollars and decades to develop a new drug. There are millions of different types of molecules out there. So how do we know where to look? How do we know what works? There is also little new antibiotic development by the pharmaceutical industry. Why would we invest in a drug that a patient is going to take only when everything else has failed? Take it for 10 days, cost a few hundred dollars at the very most. Compared to a drug that's going to take tens of thousands of dollars, like a cancer drug, or a drug someone will have to take every single day for the rest of their lives, like for diabetes. So in recent years, the major pharmaceutical companies have abandoned antibiotics research. We are losing the research teams the specific knowledge that is needed for discovering new antimicrobials. I ran a survey of biotech and pharma companies, and, and we found that there are less than a thousand antibiotics developers in industry on Earth to tackle the challenge. They're an endangered species. They should be on the red list. So now, moving forward, we've got to start of creative approaches. We need new tactics to reinvigorate the antibiotics discovery pipeline. And we believe that the broader chemical community may hold at least part of the answer. Globally, chemists are creating thousands of molecules every day. It's been recorded uh, that 15,000 compounds are made every day by chemists around the world. And these compounds are made for a number of reasons, uh, from synthetic intermediates or treatments for other diseases, like for inflammation or for cancer. But over 99% of these compounds will fail. They'll end up collecting dust on a shelf or in a deep freezer, or even worse, in the bin, and never been looked at again for what other disease they could cure. So we know that the molecules are out there, they're sitting on the shelves of chemists in universities and research institutes all around the world. 
That's why in February 2015, we've launched COAD, the Community for Open Antimicrobial Drug Discovery. It's a not-for-profit community approach to discovering new antibiotics with support from the University of Queensland and from the Wellcome Trust, a global charitable foundation. So we are a team of 15 antibiotic hunters and we screen compounds, molecules, for free to test their killing ability against bacteria and fungi. It sounds very easy when, when I say it, um, but how, how do we motivate the, the chemistry community to actually submit compounds for testing? So what we have noted is that open collaboration actually drove the discovery of most antibiotics during that golden age of antibiotics discovery. We want to go back to the future. Kobadi is based on an open access model, so basically it's very easy to participate. Any chemist in the world can send us any synthetic molecule or pure natural compound for free testing against a set of five bacteria and two fungi. How does that work? Well, first of all, we have to explain academics why they should send us compounds. So we jump on the plane to meet chemists and we tell them they can be part of the fight against drug-resistant infections with one simple molecule. Once a researcher has agreed to send compounds for screening, they simply ship them to Australia, um, and uh, those compounds will go through a number of tests to find out that they can kill those sneaky microbes. So they go through a number of tests in our microbiology and chemistry labs, and we feel the results back into the research community so people can make an informed choice of what other compounds they could send us next. Basically, we're asking two questions here. Can the community work together to address a global threat? And are there antimicrobial compounds within our collectively diverse chemistry? Well, the answers are yes and, and maybe. <laughs> so as of today, in August 2016, we have received 120,000 molecules from all corners of the world, 35 countries from Argentina right through to Russia and Thailand. And we're collecting more. We have about 350,000 in the way. Some researchers are sending two molecules. Uh, some researchers are sending thousands every month. And we've screened about half of those compounds we've received. And we actually have found compounds that do kill bacteria and fungi and that are now being developed. One last component of the program. COAD is open access. That means that all the data generated is made available to the community for anyone to go and see and share. The positive and the negative results are both important, so people don't keep screening the same type of molecules over and over. We want to be the knowledge around what could make an antibiotic and what could not, and we want to feed that back into the research community. Before I leave the stage, let me leave you with this. We are looking for the next antibiotic, and we have some fantastic results. But it will take years before it ends up at the doctors for us to be prescribed. But we're building the knowledge about what kills a bacteria or a fungi and what doesn't. So just like we have tissue banks, brain banks, or the World Bank, we are now building the world's largest compound bank and database to fight infectious disease. Although for the time being, the focus is on finding the next antibiotic, this model could be adapted to fight other disease. We could fight malaria. We could fight dengue. Or possibly anything that is a major threat to human health. Thank you. <laughs>